really important, though, for the document to, to describe and to record those numbers. Because, candidly, the local communities, as they push through their own recoveries, are still going to be focused on their, on their objectives as they stated it in their own local summaries. It's our job to understand that and to help to support that and where we have precious resources. Again, I, I'm going to use those words very carefully. Precious resources. We have limited funds. We have limited labor. We have limited support. But to the, to the extent we can deploy, we're going to be very accurate and very pointed. We can understand that and perhaps aid and assist in those local recoveries. But, and I, I think what you're asking for is to pull the number out of the hat. Obviously, we don't have this stage. And no, I mean, the economy is so complex, right? If you look back over the last four years at every economic prediction that, that top economists in the country have used, right? It's probably about half as reliable as a seven-day weather forecast, <laughs> to be frank. No, I'm, I'm just, it's, and it's not that they're not smart, not that they're not working hard, but it's just, it's very hard. So we can pull out, uh, you know, a, a number and say, all right, we're going to create uh, 150,000 jobs in the next uh, four years. I'd rather take a little more time on it. You know, some of the counties did give specific numbers. Most of them did not. So we did. There was no way we could really assemble that without us imposing, uh, you know, numbers that I don't think we had sufficient data to. We would be guessing, quite honest. Governor, three years from now, and it's time for re-election. What what is going to have to happen with this plan for you to say? This was a success. It didn't work. How will you convince voters? Well, if you work through the plan, there are specifics all through it, and we will continue as we keep working on this to add specifics, right? So I think it's very similar. Um, Roxanne White mentioned this this morning. Very similar to when we did the uh, rolled out the initial 10-year uh, plan to end homelessness, right? We had checklists of things that we were going to get done in the ultimate goal of you know trying to cut chronic homelessness by 75% in the first five years, trying to you know, we had very specific goals there that were very challenging. We met them. We met most of them. Um, we will get to that same level with this as well. Yeah. Fall, following okay, on that, who's going to be in charge of uh, making sure that this plan is, is followed through? With? You are. You guys think you get a free ride? Say we're going to do this, this, and this immediately. So, so Wayne is in transition. Ken Lund's about to take over an Office of Economic Development. We'll let Ken Lund ask, answer the hard ones. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Good morning. Uh, as uh, indicated, I start uh, in the role on August 1st, so I'm, uh, I think, Chief Execution Officer would be. Uh, maybe, not, maybe not the right phrase. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think uh, I think most of the, in answer to your question, I think most of the uh, measurables are actually do have dates. And I haven't actually put them in into a chronological order, but I think I know, for instance, uh, Barbara Kelly and the Department of uh, Regulatory Affairs is set to provide to us some feedback on the Pits and Keys program that she's been doing around the state. That's due at the end of September. Uh, then our policy team will convert those kinds of things into prospective legislation, which will go into the 2012 legislative session. So I think if you go through there and put the dates on it, I think that, that uh, calendar, if you will, uh, will start to become self-evident. Yeah. Isn't there a lot of uh, a lot of the more smaller rural counties or agrarian um, innovation and technology or things that are always top of mind there? Um, how will you? And it's almost it's, it's a little bit of a different language than they're used to speaking. How are you going to engage with them? One of the things that shocked me, and, and did, I wouldn't say shocked too strong words. One of the things that surprised me in rural Colorado, both in mountain towns on the eastern plains, was that innovation and technology are 
part of their everyday language and their everyday life. Until you spend a day with a, a dryland farmer in Southeast Colorado and seeing how innovative they have to be to make a profit out of a very difficult landscape, you haven't seen anything about innovation. And technology, you look, go out and, and I wrote the cab with a, uh, an international harvester combine, right? That thing is, is running off GPS, plus or minus six inches. So it's not missing a single square foot of that field and making sure that they get maximum benefit from how they uh, irrigate with the water, how they plant, how they harvest. Uh, and one of the things we heard everyone to say was, they want to make sure they have redundant broadband access, right? High-speed internet should be in every town. And we're full into the EagleNet process, you know, leveraging a federal grant with a uh, hundred million dollars from commerce, with a, almost fifty million dollars from private enterprise companies partnering with the state to make sure that we do deliver that middle mile to every school district, and there we'll be able to break down the community. But I, I I disagree. I think the world is changing, and I think our uh, one of the really inspiring things is that rural Colorado is ahead of most of the world in terms of how do you take these te technological innovations and, and utilize them to, to make your, your each acre more successful or uh, more productive. Yeah. Do you think, um, Governor, that uh, there will be uh, a need for legislation to implement some points of this plan next year? And if so, what kind of legislation would you like to see? Well, well certainly that's the next step is to go through an evaluation and work with the legislature and say, all right, these are the places. So some of that will be in regulation, some of that's in terms of access to capital, some of that's in terms of uh, you know, training and education and workforce development. Each of those will have some components that will require partnerships. But the whole point of this thing is it's, it's all about collaboration, right? The whole point of doing a bottom-up, I mean, most states, the new governor comes in, he gets elected, he assembles as far as people from the business community, they spend eight months in meetings, and then they produce an economic development plan that they roll out to the rest of the state. This is almost the opposite, right? Of going out to rotary clubs and, and chambers of commerce, all the regional economic development groups that are already in place around the state, trying to to really be the catalyst that allows them to collaborate at a very high level. You know, no matter how great an idea you have and how long you think about it, the moment you start talking to somebody else about that idea, it automatically becomes better, right? That's the whole point behind Wikipedia, right? Wiki is the, the Hawaiian word for fast. The, the, the more rapidly we get more people involved in, in trying to improve these ideas, how do we uh, stimulate uh, innovation and make sure that we, that we get maximum benefit from Technology. How do we figure out new ways of maybe insuring a little bit of that loan so that more banks can more rapidly help businesses expand? All those things are, the more people we get working together, the more rapidly we'll solve it. We have time for just one or two. Uh, Governor, we hear a lot about cutting red tape. What's one area, where one specific example we can point to where that could uh, be? Well, there are a bunch of like, well, so you kind of a CDOT's a good example. CDOT's a great example. And CDOT, even within the first few weeks of uh, the administration, turned around and commenced a, an internal audit. Just looking at old rules and procedures and the way that they do their business. And frankly, that has led into a much more macro and, and comprehensive review that perhaps will yield some legislative changes and amendments. But right out of the gate, as an example, CDOT has a request for proposal pro program and procedure. It's a, it's a way that they contract or contract with, with the private sector. It's a 69 page document. It's been in place since like 1984. It had yet, it, it never had a structural review. Don Hunt and his team was able to kind of purge it, scrub it, reduce it, shrink it, make it a little bit more. The, the cycle time for a contractor to engage with the, with the, the state government uh, agency is down and improved. That's a, that's a shining bright example. And it implies, frankly, across all communities. Yeah, the other thing I would add to that is I think it's important that we do a, a very high quality review of the regulatory environment. Um, it's easy enough for us to probably go in to various departments and find places where we're regulating the buggy, buggy whip manufacturing uh, <laughs> process, right? And, and we can claim victory here today on something like that, but it really doesn't do any good for business. It doesn't help us grow a better business environment. So I think we're trying to do a high quality review over time. As I mentioned, Barbara Kelly's working on that. Every one of our cabinet officers is working on that in their respective departments. So I, I do think there's more to come, uh, but I think we want it to be high quality and make a real impact. Let's go to Jennifer, please, and Patrick, we need to wrap up. One of the things that's mentioned in the 
increasing access yeah. to capital. And it talks about applying for federal monies to yep. start that process. And then it talks about matching those federal monies 10 to 1 and, yep. and, and doing it that way. And I wanted to ask some more specifics on that if you know yet in terms of matching those monies through venture capital or angel investors. Or There's a, a bunch of different. It's, a, it's matching is an incorrect statement. Well, okay. It's let they. It's, so basically, we have uh, the state small business credit initiative uh, provides Colorado up to seventeen million dollars to fund small businesses through collateral support programs, um, as well as angel investing tax credits, things like that. Uh, so it's a resource that allows banks uh, and businesses to to secure loans uh, by secure. I mean, make sure there's adequate security for the bank to make the loan. Uh, Needle make it easier for those businesses to get loans. That, that was during the campaign and during the bottom up economic development process. The thing we were most consistent was access to capital. That, that and, and internet access to capital. Governor Patrick, and then we wrap up. If you look at the most poverty stricken parts of the state, the Southeast Corridor, San Luis Valley, uh, is a plan like this realistic for them to really build from the ground up because they don't have even the head start that? That this place had two years ago. Well, again, don't write off Southeast Colorado. Don't write off the San Luis Valley. There are uh, hotbeds of innovation there, uh, and, and people that are willing to roll up their sleeves and, and work as hard as, as it needs to, you know, create new businesses and find new new techniques. You know, I spent a fair amount of time in Southeast Colorado during the campaign, and, and, and since then, and they're not rolling over. They are. They fully recognize that the the economy is changing. They want their fair shot at attracting new businesses, right? But they're the first people to talk about making sure we have redundant internet access that comes out to their community. Uh, the San Luis Valley is filled with pockets of innovation. There are all kinds of small businesses that are starting down there. They have been hard hit, right? And we recognize that, 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 we, that they are going to need different uh, solutions than maybe other parts of the state. But that's why we went down there, right? We have now incorporated in this process their voice, right? Their expression of what, what their specific challenges are, what their common challenges are, their common statewide, but also you know, what they think they need uh, to, to get them off on the, on the right foot. Okay, so thank you. The press release will be sent out electronically right after this is over. Um, there's a link online. If you have follow-up questions, find me today. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>